Thank you. <clears throat> the Bible says that his, God's people are destroyed because of ignorance. Uh, I don't think we give enough consideration to that. To be ignorant about anything is kind of sad. Will Rogers said one time, we're all ignorant about something. But don't be ignorant about the essential things of life. Where are you going to spend eternity? That's not one of the things to be ignorant about. Unless a person understands the dispensations of the Bible, that person will never have an accurate knowledge of the Bible. The secret of knowing the Word of God is to see how it is divided up. Now, there are several ways that you can divide the Bible. For example, <coughs> if you wanted to, you could divide the Bible by Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You could say in the Old Testament, we have the works of God upon humanity. In the Gospels, you have the work of the Son of God upon humanity. And in the Epistles, you have the work of the Holy Ghost upon them. And so you would have a, you know, a sketchy idea of what it's all about. But if you go into a definitive situation of what God did in certain periods of time, then that's what the dispensations are all about. So I would like for you to come to know them because there are people that are so messed up in this area until almost everything they teach is wrong because it doesn't, it doesn't relate to what God was doing at a certain time so they don't have any idea of what it's all about. So we trust that you will learn about the dispensations of God. Today's lesson is called the time of man's innocence. <laughs> I wrote the word amazing. You say, well, you wrote the book while you write the word for, I'm still amazed. There was a time when man was a complete innocent creature, as innocent as a little baby, two hours old. He was a complete innocent creature. He did not know anything bad, and he did not know when he was doing good. He was absolute innocent. What an amazing revelation, you know, that we one time were what we are not anymore. It might be that in the, in, in the great and awesome future, beginning with the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ and continuing uh, through eternity, that we will return to such a state to man will not know good or bad. He will know perfection through God flowing through him, divine perfection. And your introduction, it says, unless a person has a, a, an adequate, you want to add words in there, that's all right. Unless man has an adequate understanding of all the dispensations of the Word of God, the Bible cannot be adequately understood. And so it is, we're not talking about something where you have a preference saying, well, I will or I won't. We're dealing with something that if you're going to understand what God is doing and what God was doing at certain times, then you must come to understand that God set up some uh, sections. And we're studying today the first one of these. The time when he, Adam was created and placed in the garden. Uh, at that moment, they begin the time of his of his innocence. If you'd open up your Bible to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, God said, let us make man. Now, they cannot take that us out of there. On the first page of the Bible, it says, let us. They use the word Elohim, which, which actually means more than one. Elohim, God. And that let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness. Now, you could just get stuck there for the rest of your life, I suppose, that uh, you could say, now, let me see, is, is God a football player? 
or is he a basketball player? Is he six foot six or is he four foot wide? I think you would miss it both ways. I think the, 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 the parts of you that are, uh, that are outstanding, a nose and some eyes and ears and so forth, and what, what we have done with that image makes it different. In some countries, they eat certain kinds of food that limits their stature. And so they, they're not the original uh, shape that the father was in and that they, uh, when he created Adam and Eve. But uh, essentially, you are you're created, in, the Bible says, in the image and likeness of God. Isn't that different than beginning as a tadpole? Amen. How terrible a human brain can get screwed up until God says you are in the likeness and the image of the Almighty and Darwin comes along and calls you a tadpole and your whole educational system, maybe for a hundred years, believed that junk. Did you know when I was attending classes in the University of Chicago, one of my teachers said, Darwin never wrote a whole page that's right. Didn't have one single page. And the gullible school systems of the world began to say that man evolved. And, and now with all the controversy raging about it, uh, some scientists are saying, well, the easiest thing for me to believe is, is Genesis. All these other things that we come up with for billions of years don't, don't fit anything. And, and I, so it looks to me like the easiest thing for me to believe is, is the book of Genesis. But I want to tell you something. If there's a, a Greek truth, I want to tell you the devil wants to smear it up and mess it up and cause you, you not to follow the truth of God. Can you say amen? amen? If it's the day Christ was born, the devil would like for you to play around with a stupid Santa Claus, you know. You say, oh, that's nice. Well, the devil thought so, he created it. But a lot of Christians still play around with it, you see. But they don't want you to know that the Son of God was born. Why don't we tell the story right? That the Son of God was born to redeem a world from sin. That he came forth from the heavenlies, born of the Holy Ghost. Why don't we tell the story right? Some of you don't even read the Christmas story on Christmas morning to your own children. Then you wonder why they don't understand all about it. Then the world got worse at Easter. All they had at Christmas was a figment of imagination handed down through the centuries. They couldn't pick up another Santa Claus, so they got a, got a rabbit. Well, why didn't they get a tortoise? That would have been a little slower, you know. Or it would have been a little prettier if they'd have got a deer, you know. But they stooped down to a rabbit. And then, and, and then we even have rabbits laying eggs. You know, <laughs> rabbits don't lay eggs at all, you see. It's not a funny thing. It's taking us away from the true revelation of God that would damn your soul. When you can't get truth right, you can't make it to heaven. It is so essential to put the cardinal truths of God before us. And so in Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man. So he was made by God, designed by God. In our own image, in our own likeness, and let them have dominion. Put a circle around the word dominion. The devil wants every human being to be a slave. No doubt when the tobacco plant was created, it was supposed to kill bow weevils. And we elevated it to where it kills men and women, you see. But anybody 
who is subjected to nicotine is a slave. He's not a freeborn person. On these airplanes, you feel sorry for these people. They shimmer and they shake. They want a cigarette so bad. And there's a sign that says no smoking up there. A few days ago, I had a Japanese man to get so angry. He didn't know what to do. He was sitting right beside me. And that plane hadn't been off the ground two minutes before he grabbed a cigarette that was very strong and began to puff on it just, and the girl came right by and says, you're in a non-smoking area, sir. And he bellowed back, I'll smoke anywhere I want to. She says, no, you won't. You get up and move right now. I'll put you back in the smoking area somewhere. But you felt sorry for the man. He paid full price for his ticket. But, 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 but he couldn't stand not having a suck of nicotine in his lungs, you see, a slave. But put a circle around that word, dominion. God never made you no human being. Slavery came from the devil. It's still of the devil. It always was of the devil. And I hate slavery. But I hate it in all of its forms. What is drugs? It's absolute slavery. Half the people in the world that are on drugs tonight would give anything to get off, but they're slaves. They, they want to get off, but they have no way to get off of drugs. They think that at least. Jesus can set them free if they, when they really want, want to be free. Alcohol is the same. It's a part of the devil, devil's slavery kits. What good is alcohol anyway? It, it is no good. It don't even taste good. It don't even smell good. Looks like they put some perfume in it at least to make it smell good. It stinks. And you ought to see people drink it. You know? I don't do that to orange juice when I drink it, you see. Yeah. You got to know the things that are motivated by the devil. And if they're motivated by the devil, God's people don't participate. We don't believe in slavery of any form, of any kind. We believe in the freedom that God put in our spirits to be free when he created us. And all people said, he said, I'll give him dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth. <laughs> you didn't know that? This earth belongs to us. We have dominion over it. We have rulership over it, all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, in this first week of creation, I'll go through them rather quickly as you follow me. On the first day, he created light and separated from darkness. On the second day, he created the firmament that, that, that there might be clouds above us and so forth and water on the earth, that it might be a shadow over the earth and also a shadow for man and to make a difference between the sky and the land. On the third day, he caused the dry land and the vegeta vegetation to come forth. He, pu he pulled the mountains uh, up high and made the plains down low. And the fourth day, God created the sun and the moon and the stars that man might have light affecting him. He placed them and replaced them wherever they ought to be. On the fifth day, he created the birds and the waters. On the sixth day, on the water creatures, God created the animals that were to be associated with man. And then he created man uh, him, himself. Man was the last of the creation, as you can see here. God is so good that uh, he set the house in order before he put man in it. He didn't let man come and go through all the mess that he had to go through with to make all this stuff. And so he, he fixed the house up, put it all in order, and dusted it off before man ever got here. He is such a good God. And all the people said, so he was the last of the creation God made the house before he put the beautiful person in it. On the seventh day, God limited himself to this earth because there are no days in heaven. On the seventh day, then God 
rested. Now we have a great truth in our number two point here, a tremendous truth, that a thousand years is as a day, and a day is as a thousand years. You see that in 2 Peter 3 and 8. He says, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day. Right above that they were talking about the flood. So he is showing you in thousand year periods the, the, the creation of God in the six day period. And so, and your point A, in the first two days we come to the time called the flood, and, then, and your first uh, 2,000 years uh, from Adam uh, to the flood, approximately. Nobody knows the exact days. Um, and then in your B, the second 2,000 years, or, or four and five, you, you, you come to the cross. Uh, and there we find the cross of Jesus. Uh, really, every 2,000 years there's judgment. Uh, on the first 2,000 years, man was judged. And on the second, uh, God was judged. The Lord Jesus Christ was verily God. It's an, am an amazing thing. Trying to get this world straightened out and trying to get the world to live right, uh, he sent his son uh, with the blood with the blood of heaven, with the blood of the Holy Ghost inside his veins because science knows that the, that the sperm that creates the blood comes from the man. And uh, Mary never knew a man. She, the Holy Spirit overshadowed her. So though his body was a human body, his blood was divine. It could save the world. And how glad we are for that. So in the second 2,000 years, there are days of four and five and you come to the cross. In the last 2,000 years of the creation of man, we come to the last period of grace. Uh, we come to the time we call the great tribulation period. So we are now functioning in the sixth day, which is the, which is the last of the creation days. Uh, when God for six days created the heavens and the earth, we, we come to that last Saturday evening and it ends with judgment just as the other two, 2,000 years ended in judgment. This one ended in the greatest judgment called the Great Tribulation. And the Great Tribulation <clears throat> isn't for God's people. We have, we have so many people running around uh, uh, saying that the church will go through the Tribulation. And all you got to do is ask one question, what for? We have already been redeemed by the blood we don't have any sin hanging over our lives. We're saved. And what would be the purpose? Of, you know, you know, we are the bride of Christ. What, what would be the purpose of getting a beautiful bride than dragging her through the streets and have a mud hole? You know? And, and so we're not supposed to go through that, that bloody, awful tribulation time. Now, we are in tribulation, but we've been that way for 2,000 years. The church has been hated and hated and, and hated for 2,000 years. But this is not that. This is God's judgment upon man and upon the nations. And we're getting ready for that on planet Earth today. Our country is getting ready for that. Completely ignoring everything God taught, everything that God said means nothing to this present generation. And when we get at a stalemate and someone rises up and says, I have food for everybody, all you've got to do is just to take my signature in your hand here and I'll see to it that you have food. We call him the Antichrist and, and what a day that will be. And there'll be so many people that will be so far from God, even though they're church people, they'll be so far from God they will take the mark of the beast and the mark of the Antichrist. But, uh, but, 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 uh, but you and I, God's bride will not be here for that. That'll just, that'll just be church people doing that type of thing. And then your D point, the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ is the day of rest. That means that Jesus shall rule and reign in Jerusalem for 1,000 years. 1,000, he'll rule the total earth and the Bible says you and I shall reign with him. Yeah. Now who would like to be the mayor of South Bend? Would you raise your hand? I'll ask the Lord about that for you. <laughs> because it's been run so poorly ever since I've known it. Uh, we need somebody like that. And uh, we need a governor too. 
And uh, yeah, hands already up here for governorship. Yeah. Well, the saints of God will rule. And, and it's going to be another world. It's going to be a new world with no hate, no killing, no jailhouses, and no hospitals. Yeah. A scholar in New York City uh, just issued a book, wrote a book. It was in Newsweek this week. He says in 1995, this country will completely collapse uh, under its debt. It will die. Give it just two years to die under its load of debt. All the money that the government takes in, beginning in January 1, clear up into the middle of May at the present time, just pays the interest on the awful debt those politicians put us in. And by two years from now, it will take just over six months of the total income. Do you think that you could live with giving the bank every week all of your money for six months before you got any for yourself? Well, I, I, a nation can't do that either. They cannot do that, so they will default. And when they default, that'll be it. That'll be the explosion. My only word to you as God's people is get out of debt, stay out of debt, in Jesus' name. I don't care how bad you want something. Get out and pray through and think of the people in Africa that don't have a piece of bread. Stop your belly aching. Are your ears open? Yeah. yeah. We're one billion people today with their bellies empty. We don't have a right to say a word of any kind. They're dying. And I have a clipping from the newspaper that 40 million Africans will die of hunger. I wish the black people of this country would take a burden for that. We could do it together, you know. <laughs> We could do it together. Point number three here, you have the dispensation of innocence. And if you don't mind, you can put a big sign out to the side of that, kind of a big X mark. And next Sunday morning, uh, or the next class we have, we will begin at that point. And uh, we will try to move a little quicker, but I don't think I can move quicker because I'm 80 years old and I'm doing everything slower. Isn't that awful? And you will too. It just takes me twice as long to do what I want to do as it used to. But uh, we thank God for truth. Can you say amen? All kinds of truth, every truth. We thank God. The Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That's, that's all there is, just three things. He is the way, not a way. He is he is the truth, not a truth. He is the life, not a life. There's no dividing of this thing. If you're not hooked to him, you don't have either or any of those three. You don't have any of them. And so get hooked to Jesus so you can have all three of them. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Father, bless these that study the word and these that grow in the word. May we not just speak things that go in and out, but may we speak the things that stick with us it caused us to know how things began so that we'll know the truth and how they developed and how God dealt with man. Teach us, Lord, these things, these mighty truths, we pray. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand, everybody.